Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders, and it is that time of the week. It is lecture time. And this week's topic, guys, is about longer term trades. We're going to talk about swing trading, swing trading, swing trading. I get a lot of questions from folks saying, hey, what's the difference between intraday trading and swing trading specifically as it relates to scanning? How do I scan for swing trades? Um, so this topic today, guys, it's about 45 minutes or so, give or take. Uh, and I go through specifically how you scan for swing trades, how you build a swing trading universe, as well as how you can take your intraday trades, those gapping stocks that you look for every single day, how you can take those stocks and potentially turn them into swing trades. I think a lot of you out there are missing out on huge profits, big money by intraday trading a stock, but then completely taking it off your list, right? Two days later, it might have a beautiful swing trading pattern. If the gap is good enough to trade intraday, it's probably good enough as a potential swing trade. Maybe not today, but maybe two or three days from now. So again, we're going to talk about how to develop a swing trading universe of three, four, 500 stocks, all right, that you're going to filter out by price and volume and exchange preferences and et cetera and so forth, then we're also going to talk about how you take that three or 400 stock universe and dwindle it down to your 20 or 30 favorites two or three times a week. And then we're also going to talk about how you take some of those gapping stocks that you trade intraday and turn them into potential swing trades. It's a powerful lecture because it not only helps you be a better intraday trader, but it helps you be a better swing trader. And in this market, we've seen a lot of bullishness. Um, so not only can we ride the wave higher coming up potentially, but if the market does decide to crash, we'll certainly have some short opportunities as well. As we say to everybody, it, intraday trading is awesome. It's wonderful, but you should also be swing trading. Do the whole gamut. Why? There's just more money in it for not much extra work. All right. So if you like this video, guys, please click that like button, smash hammer that subscribe button. As always, don't forget those little click notifications, that little bell notification. All right. I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. Let's get to it. This week's lecture topic is scanning for swing trades. I get lots and lots of questions um, about the difference between day trading and swing trading, but even more than that, just swing trading in general. Everyone's like, well, you know, you put a lot of great day trades ideas out there, but swing trading, how do we scan for that? Is it drastically different? And people ask me frequently, you know, does professional trading strategies cover um, swing trading? And the answer is yes, it does, right? We talk about all different types of trading, but I think um, a lot of people, they confuse swing trading uh, and day trading when really they're kind of the same thing, right? Um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about scanning for swing trades, also some of your expectations when you're in an intraday trade and how you could possibly um, do a little bit better and turn it into a swing trade. But before we do that, come on, talk to me. When will the insanity stop? Um, this week's When Will the Insanity Stop comes actually from an internal source. What I mean is a member of Live Traders sent this to me and said, you know, you might want to use this. Uh, it's not nearly as egregious as some of the others, um, but at the same time, it goes to show that even people with some experience can do some foolish things from time to time, okay? And that's what we're going to see here um, with today's When Will the Insanity Stop? So it's not necessarily the the number per se, right? The absolute number. It's, it's the idea of what this person did, okay? So I kept drinking the hopium because I thought the market would rebound. Ultimately, let's get down to the good stuff. After the losses, it was about half of my profits for the year, maybe a little bit more. Guys, on two trades, on two, two trades, this person gave up more than 50% of their yearly profits. Now, I get it. It's early in the year. It's the first quarter. We're only in March, but come on. Two trades, you let wipe out all of your yearly profits? or I should say half of your yearly profits? Wow, I mean, you're gonna have to be better than that. It's just plain and simple. So basically saying, hey, I sure didn't follow my plan on my long-term long, long -term positions. Um, so lost 50% of the profits for the year on two to long-term trades. 
can't do, can't do it. It's just that simple. Um, the dollar value is almost irrelevant here. And too many traders out there are doing foolish things like this. Tell me I'm wrong. Many of you out there are having a Monday that's really good. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you give it all back. The end of the week, break even or down. Or how about this one? These, these are the worst. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you do well. Maybe you go 1R, 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 you're up 4R. Friday, you lose 4 or 5R. Boom, you're down for the week. Tell me you haven't done that before. Come on. You don't have to admit it. It's all right. Um, so when you think about it, you have to be cautious all the time. Like that's the one thing about this business that I think a lot of people don't understand. It just takes one silly mistake to wipe out tons of profits. All right. So we have to be on point all of the time. This isn't a normal business where you come in and even when you're sleepy and you're tired, you don't want to be there, you get paid. If you have a sales business, maybe you go in and you're in a bad mood, you don't sell anything. So you don't make money, but you don't lose money. Okay. In trading, you come in. If you have a bad day, man, you're probably giving up some profits. The question is how much? So follow the rules of your plan uh, because you don't want to be given back 50% um, of your year on one or two trades. Okay. All right. So let's dig in guys. So scanning for swing trades. Scanning is a hot topic with traders. Why? Well, because if you can't find trading opportunity, then it's going to be pretty tough to be a good trader, isn't it? Right? If you can't find opportunity, how are you going to make money as a trader? Um, so I thought this was an appropriate topic, especially considering uh, the markets and uh, a lot of people are jumping into the markets and they want to be longer term traders or they want, and this applies also to core trading. It's not just swing trading. It could be core trading. Um, people want to know what they should do with their 401ks, their IRAs, et cetera. So um, this right here is the goal, right? So you take this right here you have a daily chart, stocks chopping around, it moves up, chops around, pulls back, moves up, pulls back, and then boom, this wide range green bar comes in and then you get a consolidation bar, another consolidation bar. So you have a two consolidation bars, which is really good. Why is it really good? It's good because this wide range bar was pretty big, right? It's We talk about average trading range with regard to three bar plays, um, but sometimes those three bar plays, the first bar, the igniting bar is too big. And when that bar is too big, you really want more of a resting period. Uh, in this case, you got that. So when you're scanning, don't get me wrong, we're going to get into this in just a second. So we're just starting. But one of the things you want to see here is you have a wide range green bar that takes out this pivot, takes out this pivot, and then it also takes out this pivot over here. Okay. Um, so now you're looking, it's going, whoa, there's a lot of opportunity here as a swing trade. But how do we find these? That's the question, right? Great pattern, but only if you regularly scan your watch list. Okay. And this is what this ultimately turns into. Wow. Right. This is that same exact chart, but now filled out completely full. So the wide bar, couple narrow bars, entry is 27.50, or sorry, 27, my bad. Um, the stop loss is 25.50. It ripped all the way up to like $37, give or take. So you have a $10 move in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Let's call it two, two and a half weeks. Okay, maybe three. All right. That's a dollar fifty stop. So it's about a seven R move, not quite seven R. Pulls back, consolidates, retest, retest, and then boom, there's an opportunity to add. You don't have to add. It's not a great add. Why? Because you can't raise your stop all that much, right? You could raise it to $32, but your entry is 37, so you kind of have a wider stop. Now, it's obviously not a $5 stop loss because once you get into 27 and you add at 37, your cost average is going to be like 32.50 or some, somewhere in that range, right? Um, but the point simply is, is Swing trades can be very, very profitable. You guys have seen that in last year's swing newsletter where Unmo was up like 60%. Uh, in this year's swing newsletter, you guys are off to a really good start this year. Um, but everybody wants to know, great, that's awesome, Jared, it's wonderful. It's a, it's a daily four bar play. So what? How do we find them? Okay, well, the next slide will help you with that. Is scanning for swing trades and day trades different? Not really. The concept is the same, meaning we're still looking for what? Three bar plays. We're still looking for daily buy setups. We're still looking for parabolics. We're still looking for breakouts. We're even looking for certain types of gaps. So in that respect, if you're already a good intraday scanner, the, the transition to swing and core trading scanning should be pretty easy. But there is one subtle, could be a major difference, but I think it's a bit of a subtle difference. You should, in my opinion, for swing trading, 
you should create a universe of stocks, okay? And you should filter that universe by price, by volume, by tradeability, by trading range, by your preferences. Some people, for example, I don't like to trade Amex stocks at all. I just pretty much don't even trade them. So in my universe, I would trade NASDAQ and New York stocks. So when you think about creating a universe, for example, some people don't like to trade big, huge, spready, whippy stocks like Tesla. Now remember, think I want you to really give it some thought. This is not day trading. This is swing trading, which means if you're in a stock like Amazon or Tesla, some of those whippiness and some of those gaps can be massive, right? I mean, we've seen Amazon have 100 plus day ranges, $100 ranges, right? Um, so you may say, you know what? Intraday trading, I'm cool, I'm good trading Tesla. But man, do I wanna swing trade a stock that could move up 100 or $200 in a three day period? Do I wanna subject myself to that level of volatility? I'm not saying you shouldn't, I'm not saying you should. I'm just saying consider it, that's all, consider it. Okay, so volume as well. One of the things I notice a lot of people doing is trading really, really thin stocks when they swing trade. And they go, well, it's a swing trade. So, you know, I only need 100, 200,000 shares. Really? You know, slippage is slippage. <laughs> whether it's an intraday trade on a two minute chart or whether it's a daily chart, slippage is still slippage. So, I would highly recommend at a minimum. You're trading swing trading stocks that have at least 500,000 shares of average daily volume. A million is far better, but 500,000 shares of average daily volume is probably where you want to be. Okay. Tradeability. This is one I get. It kind of, in some ways, goes back to price. There are some stocks, okay, that are just really hard to trade, right? Whether they're thin on the volume or maybe they're very, very liquid, but they're very whippy, they're very gappy. Um, so for example, in the chat room today, we talked about Baidu, right? It's on somebody's shit list is what they said because of how it trades sometimes. Well, swing trading amplifies that, right? They can be very choppy sometimes. They may ultimately go in your direction, but they do so in a very choppy manner or they might shake you out and then go higher. So again, it's hard when you're building a universe to know how every stock trades. Some of this will come down to experience with regard to tradeability. So when we talk about tradeability. All right, it's something that not every every stock trades the same. Okay, so you want to make sure um, that it's a it's a stock that you can handle the whippiness and the spreadiness of it. Okay, um, trading range is a big deal. Okay, um, there are a lot of stocks, even swing stocks, that will only do fifty cents a day, seventy five cents a day, and for some of you that might be fine. I like stocks that do at least a dollar in range per day, and I don't like to trade zero to ten dollar stocks. I like at stocks to be over ten dollars. Now I get it. A lot of you out there want to trade penny stocks. Uh, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But just remember, they're highly correlated with news uh, and they can get halted and they can rip in your favor, but they can also go against you as well. So be careful. Um, so my point simply in saying create a universe. Well, by doing this, guys, you're going to dwindle down your options to trade. See, when you go out there and you say, all right, show me everything, show me everything, you're going to come up with like seven or eight thousand stocks. Yes, seven or eight times back. Let's take a quick look. I'll come back to this in a second. Let's take a quick look. All right. Here's Finviz. Okay. A second there. And what does it say down here? Notice exchange any, market cap any, earnings date any, target price any, all this. 7,971 stocks come up on this list. Do you want to have 7,000, 8,000 stocks on your universe? No. The whole point in making a universe is so that you have stocks that that fit your wheelhouse, that fit your price range, fit your volume requirements, um, fit your exchange preferences, right? Fit all of that, okay? Um, so you wanna keep that in mind. And Finviz, I just bring this up because it's free and a lot of you guys are cheap, so you only look at free products, you Robin Hood people out there. Um, but you can drop down the menu here, right? You see Amex, you see NASDAQ, you see New York stock, right? Well, let's just go NASDAQ, boom. We go to NASDAQ, boom. That list of 7,971 stocks is now 3,650. Just by one filter, by one filter. Now let's say we want to do stocks that have, I don't know, at least 10 billion in market cap, okay? So this one says under, let's go over two, over 10, right? Wow. Soon as we went over 10 billion in market cap, that's great. Um, as soon as we went over 10 billion in market cap, we went from 
1,650 stocks to 261. Think about that. Over 10 billion. That's not that huge of a market cap. It's not that big of a market cap. But we went down to 261 stocks. Okay. So now if you want to kind of sort it out by price range and all that stuff, you guys can do that. Okay. Yeah, the ads, right? Um, but you guys can do that. I just wanted to show you FinViz again because it's free. But another cool feature of FinViz is you can pan over, right? You go here. Hold on one second. You can pan over these. And of course, it's not working right now. There we go pan over them or click on them and it brings the chart up, right? So now all of a sudden you have this chart and you can take a look at it. So it's actually really good scanning software. If we go back to where we were, give it a second or two seconds or three seconds or 10 seconds, okay? Um, but what I want you guys to see is you can pan your cursor over and it brings up the chart, okay? And it brings up an ad on top of it. <laughs> it's like, hey, I'm trying to help you FinViz. I'm trying to show people your product is really good. And now all of a sudden, you're making yourself look bad. I can't get rid of this ad somehow. It will, it will not X out for me. Whatever. Um, point simply is you can pan over these symbols, okay? Uh, and a chart will pop up, right? Pan over the symbols, chart will pop up, chart will pop up. Why am I showing you that? Because this is a very quick way to scan, right? I mean, you have 261 stocks and you can literally click, click, not even clicking, just pan over, pan over, pan over, pan over, pan over, pan over, pan over. You can get through this list very, very quickly, okay? So let's go back to the slides here. My point I'm making is, is you don't have to have some expensive software. You don't even necessarily have to have a trading platform. And it makes it very easy with some of these scanning tools like Trade Ideas or FinViz, et cetera, and so forth, because you can just filter it out very quickly. You can say, okay, um, I want NASDAQ stocks. I want over 10 billion market cap from $10 to $100. Boom, 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 boom. All of a sudden, your list is from 7,900 stocks down to 130 stocks. Okay, so creating that list can be very, very quick. Now, once you've created what I call your universe, right? You want to scan that universe at least two or three times a week, at least two or three times a week. And what you want to do, guys, is notice here in the pink, it says put the top watchers in a favorites folder. So if you scan through that list, say there's 400 stocks on the list, okay? You should be putting your top 10 or 20 favorites in a separate section. So you'll have the whole list, okay? Maybe divide it by long ideas and short ideas, so maybe two lists. And then from those lists, you should have your favorites list. Those favorites are the ones that are most likely to trigger soon or stocks that you need to be keeping a very close eye on, okay? So scan your universe. Once you've created it, scan your universe. And then I would say once a week to two weeks, once, yeah, one every once or two weeks, um, check your universe also, meaning see if there's stocks you want to add to your universe. But once you have your universe, you're going to trade mostly those stocks. 90% of the time, those are the stocks you're going to trade right out of your universe. Every once in a while, a gapper may pop up on there that's not in your universe and you'll trade that. But 90% of the time, you'll simply trade the stocks uh, that are in your universe, okay? Um, so here's a little different picture of it, guys, one that doesn't have ads. <laughs> but you can see NASDAQ, small, over 300 million, S&P 500, uh, over 500,000, et cetera, U.S. stocks only, over $3 price range, boom, we're down to 125 stocks right? You just put all those filters in and boom, you're down to 125 stocks. You can save your portfolio, create an alert, et cetera, and so forth. Then, like I said, review these at least two or three times a week, at least two or three times a week, okay? Here's a different list, New York stocks, okay? Over 500, over $3, okay? Over 500,000 in daily volume, over $3 price. There's 329. So between those two lists, you have maybe 500 stocks. You're going to scan them two to three times a week. Now, you can use Trade ideas, if you want to do that, that's fine. There's nothing wrong. Trade ideas is maybe the best scanner out there. I mean, you can see all the different types of scans that they have, plus custom scans as well. Uh, if you want to use Fidelity, they have a scanner. Now, why am I doing all this? Because I am tired of people going, Jared, what scanner do you use? You can use any scanner you want to build your universe. Every platform out there, including TradeStation, all right? We went through FinViz, we went through Trade Ideas, we went through Fidelity, we're looking at TradeStation, you can look at Think or Swim, you can look at whatever you want. They all provide scanning software and scanning tools, okay? The only question is, what are your parameters? That is it, okay? So some of them are much more customizable, some of them are not, okay? But you're going to go through this list. So let's just say hypothetically, 
hypothetically, this is not it, but let's say this was your, your, your list. 200 longs, 200 shorts, there's 400 stocks here. Two to three times a week, you're gonna click, you're gonna have charts attached and go click, click, click. And all the ones that you really, really like based off professional trading strategies concepts, okay? Does it have a bottoming tail? Does it have a doji bar? Is it sitting on support? Is it a 50% retracement? Is it in an uptrend? Is it showing relative strength or relative weakness to the market? You're gonna use all of those same techniques to find out what stocks are gonna move from the general universe to the favorites list, from the general universe to the favorites list, okay? And you're gonna to continue to scan until you find that, and it's gonna look something like this, okay? So you're gonna have that list, whether it's trade ideas, trade station, you're gonna have a daily chart over here, a weekly chart over here, and then a 15 minute, a 60, and then a daily on the market. Like literally, this is how I scan for swing trades. That is it. I have my list over here, dollar gainers, I go down the list, I look at them on a daily, I look at them on a weekly, I have a 15 minute, I have a 60 minute, and I have the market over here, that's it. And I'm looking at them and I'm, okay, I like it, I don't like it, next. I like it, I don't like it, next. If I like it, it goes on the list. And then once you're done scanning this list, you're gonna go back to the list you created. So, right, you're gonna scan the list here. Click, 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 click. The ones you like, you put on a list, okay? A thumbnail watch list. Once you're finished, maybe of that 400 stock universe, maybe you come up with 25 ideas. Now it's time to go back to those 25 ideas and dwindle those down to your favorite. So let me repeat again. You're gonna use whatever software it is you use, whether it's Finviz, whether it's TradeStation, whether it's Thinkorswim, Fidelity, Trade Ideas, whatever, TC2000, I don't care, whatever. And you're gonna go down your list. Three, 400 ideas, it shouldn't take you that long. And all the ones that jump out to you go, wow, that's a nice uptrend and the pattern's looking juicy. Okay, based on what? The criteria we just talked about. Does it have a bottoming tail? Is it at support? Is it in an uptrend? Does it have relative strength to the market? All of those things, okay? You're gonna put them on a list. And that list might have 20 or 30 ideas on it. Then you're gonna go over those 20 or 30 and really, really scrutinize them. Like the ones that are probably gonna trigger in the next one or two days and the ones that might trigger in the next week. Prioritize them. Otherwise, you will miss them prioritize them or you will miss them, okay? So what are we looking for, right? So now we talked about how to build a universe, right? How to create a universe, price, volume, tradeability, exchange preferences, et cetera, and so forth, okay? That's the basic universe. But how do we take those 400 stocks and then go, yes, that's a great three bar play, or yes, that's a great buy setup. Well, obviously, professional trading strategies criteria. What you wanna see, guys, and this is the challenge for traders, okay? All of you guys say the same thing. Oh, well, it's easy after the fact. Well, duh, of course it's um, easy after the fact. So when you take a look at this chart, what do we have first? What's the first thing you notice here? The first thing I notice here is this gap up. Okay, you take a look right there. You're gapping over a red bar and you're very close to clearing this pivot. And this is where I find um, a big problem with a lot of traders, okay? They look at this because most traders are intraday traders and swing traders. They don't just do one or the other, okay? So you see this gap up and you intraday trade it, which is fine, and then you just forget about it. You, you don't realize you're sitting there going, wait a second. So this stock gapped over a red bar, over a pivot, over another pivot, and over another pivot. Three pivots. That's a potent gap. And not only did it gap over all three of those pivots, it shot up. So if this stock wasn't on your universe or in your universe, you need to put it there, at least for the next week, because this gap is just far too potent to just let it go. And what will happen is many of you will see this gap and you'll you'll maybe even intraday trade this gap. But then you don't look at it ever again. And then what happens? A week later, the stock is, wait for it, looking like this and you're going, oh shit, I remember trading that last week, right? I remember that stock from last week. Well, the question then is why aren't you in it? Okay, so here's the day where it gaps up and you want to be over this pink line, which is like $13, give or take, okay? You want to be over that area. Um, so you look at it and maybe you find an intraday entry, maybe you don't. Probably you did, but if you didn't, that doesn't mean you take it off the list. I see this happen all the time. 
okay? So the stock rips up and then one, two, three consolidation days later, it's ready to rock and roll. This goes back to the same comment I made earlier. This is a really wide move for this stock, okay? A super wide range move for this stock. So then you have, what, four, um, four consolidation days, which you need. See, if this was just a standard three bar play, I would actually be somewhat hesitant because this bar is so big. And then you get in at 1480, your stops at 1390, okay? Moves up, pulls back, consolidates out, moves up, consolidates out. Look, you're gonna add right around the $18 mark. And you're gonna put your stop way down here. I understand the temptation. The temptation is to put your stock under this bottoming tail over here. Well, one, this bottoming tail wasn't there when you traded this. So you would have to put it under here. Well, that's a pretty aggressive stop loss for a swing trade. And the goal for swing trades is to stay in them. The goal isn't to get out of them. The goal isn't really to scalp swing trades. The goal is to stay in swing trades, okay? So you get into 1480, your stop's 139, it moves up, chops around. You could even add right here, right? You could add on the buy set up to support. Lower high, lower high, lower high. Add at $16, raise your stop right here to 1520, but give it room, give it room, give it room. So again, this buy set up is an add area. Put your stop down here, maybe give it 50 cents below that area. Add again at 18, raise your stop to 15, 20, and this thing ends up going to $21. This is a $6 move. $6 move on something that started out to be a 90 cent stop loss, but if you add it here and add it here, this thing looks really, really good. But let's go back to the beginning. Why did you miss it? You missed it because when you were intraday trading and your gap up was right here and it ripped higher and you didn't find an entry, you got frustrated and you said, screw this stock and you threw it out. And then five days later, you're looking at it and you're going, damn, how did I miss that? Because you didn't put it on your carryover list. You didn't put it in your universe of stocks. And this is how many of you are missing good swing ideas. You do realize that a lot, not all, not all, a lot of good swing opportunities do arise or they come from good gaps because those gaps oftentimes will change the entire trend of the stock. This stock was potentially looking lower possibly, right? Put in a lower high and a lower low, and then it tried to go higher, but then it put in a topping tail and a red bar. This is not something that you probably would have had on your long swing list. But with the gap up, now it changes everything. And you may or may not have gotten the opportunity to trade this in that particular day, but that doesn't mean you scrap it. And I'm gonna come back to something. It's your job. This is a job. It's your job to make sure you don't miss something like this, okay? And it gave you three days to wait, which was a good thing. But if you didn't put that stock on your list, you probably would have missed scanning for it, okay? Let's try it again, all right? This is DG from a little while back, okay? All right, look at this initial gap. Big gap up over a red bar, over a pivot, and it ultimately clears this pivot as well, right? So two red bars and two pivots it's gapping over, okay? What happens to many of you? Well, the next day, DG has a very small gap, right? So after this big, beautiful gap, all right? And it is a beautiful gap. After this big, beautiful gap, this thing gaps up, breaks over this pivot. And the next day, it's what? 20, 30 cent gap up? You're not even watching it. You don't even care. You're like, oh, DG was awesome yesterday. Well, what about today? Nah, eh, whatever. So it puts in a narrow range resting day. Eh, whatever. I traded it. I made money off it yesterday. I'm not going to look at that again. Why not? It just gapped over two red bars and two pivots to an all-time high. Why wouldn't you, quote, not look at it again? Why? Because you're lazy? I don't know. What's, what's it to you to add one more stock to your 400 stock universe? Now you have 401 stocks, 402 stocks. What's the big deal? It's not a big deal and you know it. Narrow range resting bar. Now look. Boom, rips, pulls back, what a beautiful ad area, and rips again. Stock goes from 128, right here, which is the entry, stop loss is 125.50, to 145, $17 move on a $2.50 stop. Over, what, seven to one, six to one, something like that? And then if you added, maybe more. 
don't forget about a stock after it gaps up or down. Often they form nice patterns one to three days later. I'm telling you this because this is the missing tool for many of you. Many of you can go on the Finviz and scan daily charts. You're like, oh, that's a decent daily breakout. Oh, that's a decent daily buy setup, right? A lot of people are good at that, but they're not good at translating or taking their gap list and turning it into swing trades. And I'm not talking intraday tra swing trades. I'm not talking about that right now. I'm talking about looking at how damn good this DG gap was and then actually keeping it on a carryover list or a swing universe list and then revisiting it one, two, three days later to see if there's anything left. And in this case, look at you would have given up a painless, beautiful daily three bar play. And that daily three bar play was only made possible because of how good this gap was. And this gap was really awesome. Okay, let's look at it again. This is another example. RLX, I believe this was yesterday. It gapped down under two green bars and a pivot. What happens? It gaps down under two green guards and a pivot and goes lower. None of you guys have looked at it since. I don't know what it's doing today, but a few days ago, it had a three bar play at $10 and it moved about $2.20. I think this went down to like $7.80 or something like that. I don't remember the exact number. That's 2R in the first day of the trigger. So you're in at 10, your stop is 11.10 and it goes 2R on day one. Free trade after that, right? Free trade. You got 2R, go to break even and see what you can get after that. But she didn't get it. Because on this gap down, when you were looking at it, under green bars, under a pivot, it already did its business. You're like, oh, sweet. I made some money on the gap down. Maybe it's not done yet. Maybe it's got more left in the tank to go lower. Well, in this case, it did. Okay? Now, we could talk about intraday swing trades where you hold one third Ross or you hold two thirds or whatever, right? And that's fine. But that's not the topic right now. The topic right now is why are you missing these ideas? Now, I agree, Ross, for example, if you hold a little bit, one third, you're more likely to keep an eye on it, which is a good idea. But not every trade gives you the opportunity to get into it on day one, right? That DG trade, for example, maybe you had an intraday trade on it, maybe you didn't, but it still doesn't take the potency away from the gap. Let's do it again. It's another example. Now, this is twofold. You have a daily breakout right here, right? A stock that moves up, pulled back deep, came all the way back up, and over, what, a two, three-week period, it consolidated right here, okay? This is a breakout. You could have bought this at like $9.80 with a stop loss at $8.80. Call it a $1 stop loss. It might be a little more than that. That's a daily breakout that you might find in your universe. Awesome. Triggers, 980, stop 880, whatever. Rips higher, awesome, you're happy. Next day consolidates. Did you add? Did you add? Did you add at 1025 and raise your stop to 990? I hope so, because this stock went up to like 1150. Now that doesn't sound like much, but from your original entry, right, at 980, 1150 is like a dollar eighty, and it was a pretty tight stop loss after the ad. So let's do the math together, okay? Let's do the math together. Let's say you get into 880, sorry, 980, with a stop at 880. Cool, fine, dollar stop, which means you need about 1180 to get two to one. But then you see this beautiful three bar play. You can see it blown up over here on the right hand side. You add it 1025. Well, 980 and 1025, let's pull out our trusty little calculator, okay? 980 plus 10.25 equals divided by two, Ten dollars and two cents, ten dollars and two and a half cents to be technically accurate. What's your new raised stop loss? Nine ninety because that's under the three bar play. So now you have a twenty. No, you have a twelve cent, thirteen cent stop loss, and then the stop goes a dollar twenty five. Hello, right? Think about what I just said. You get in at the at your nine eighty stop is at eight eighty. Love that bottoming tail. You add at ten twenty five. Add a full lot. A full lot. You could actually add more than a full lot on this because you're tightening the stop so much. So let's, let's say you added a double lot. So now you have three times as many shares. Triple the shares. Your cost average would be around 10, 10. Your stop's 920. Sorry, 990. So you have a 20 cent stop loss. So you've reduced your exposure and you've also increased your risk to reward different topic, but you can understand how powerful and potent this is. 
goes up to 1150. It's 10 to one there possibly, 10 to one. If you didn't add, you're not even at two to one. I'm gonna repeat that last part. If you didn't add, you're not even at two to one. If you added, you might be as much as 10 to one. Yeah, it makes that big of a difference sometimes. Okay, I get another question all the time. Well, I don't understand how to discern relative strength on swing trades. I just got three emails about this um, over the weekend. So, so let's take a look. Take your stock, take the market, put them right next to each other, literally right next to each other. So this pink line represents the stock on this particular day, right? The pink line represents the stock on this particular day. The pink line represents the market on this particular day. Why am I showing you this? I'm showing you this to show the difference between the stock and the market. The market on the right hand side here is continually going lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. And this stock is in an uptrend, it's pulling back, it's in an uptrend. Now, is this the world's greatest entry? No, that's not the point. The point here is people always ask me, well, how do I know what is stronger than or weaker than the market with swing trading? Intraday trading, oh, that's easy, Jared. I look at the five minute cues and I look at the five minute of Facebook. Okay, it's no different. The only difference is the time frame. You're looking at daily charts instead of five minute charts. So the market's clearly pulling back here and this stock's clearly grinding higher. So this stock clearly has relative strength to the market. Now the bigger picture says the market's in an uptrend because we can see the rising 200 period moving average. So now what do we wanna do? If anytime we see the market bounce, go back to this stock and see if there's any type of buy setup, any type of breakout. And you might find it over here with this bottoming tail, lower high, lower high, lower high, bottoming tail. And you're like, okay, this stock was stronger than the market. And now look, three or four days later, three or four days later, the market is engulfing green and looking higher. Good time to buy a swing trade. It's been stronger than the market during the market pullback. And now the market looks slightly higher and the stock's giving you a buy setup with a bottoming tail. That's how you discern the relative strength or relative weakness on a swing trade. So it's no different than intraday trading. You're just using a higher time frame. Literally put them next to each other, okay? Similar situation here. I went up to, in this case, to a weekly time frame. all right? So stock weekly on the left, market weekly on the right. Hmm, interesting, right? So we have the market kind of chopping, 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 market goes higher. Well, if you take a look, the market bounced kind of over here. This stock is bouncing a little bit quicker. So what do we have in the market? A double bottom retest, right? 100% retracement retest, but the market's in an uptrend. So the market is, or sorry, the stock, my bad, the stock's in an uptrend. So the market's struggling a little with a double bottom, but the stock is clearly in a stage two uptrend. The market could be, in a stage three, maybe transitioning to a stage four. It's possible, but it's also four days, three days down into what? Support. The market bounced here at this green line previously, which means it's probably going to bounce again at that same prior support and pivot area. One, two, three bars down. You see a green bar, rip. Now look over here. Lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, just above support. If we were to draw a support line, in fact, let's do that. Let's do this. Okay, let's take this and just make one over here. Okay. So now we have some support here. It's a little above support. It's above the rising moving average. Your trigger is right there somewhere around, I don't know, 23 bucks, 22.50. Your stops at 22, rip. It's already up three, four dollars. Why? because the market was likely gonna bounce here. Does this mean the market's gonna put in a new all-time high? Not necessarily, no. But if this stock is pulling in a much more controlled manner why the stock or the market is getting beaten up, you know when the market goes green, which it should at least for a day or two go green, this stock's probably gonna rip. This is relative strength to the market. So don't trivialize relative strength. Just compare it to the market. It, it doesn't have to be rocket science. Okay, here's another example, okay? Stock weekly, market weekly. Same market, different stock. Same market, different stock. What do we have? 
Market in an uptrend, consolidates, in an uptrend, consolidates. Well, look at the consolidation. So go back one, two, three, four days. Go back one, two, three, four days. Hmm. The stock is leading the market. So anytime the market's ready or poised to bounce off of support, the stock will probably be poised to bounce also. So it's consolidating while the market pulls back. That's bullish. Consolidating back to the rising moving average in an uptrend while the market pulls back relative strength. It's not rocket science. It's not rocket science. Okay. These are some of the types of patterns you're going to be looking for. You're looking at a stock that's all over the map. Now, over here, you're kind of thinking this is not the easiest stock to trade in the world, right? Little double bottom retest, moves up, chops around, little kind of a wedge, ascending triangle, gaps up, but there's no great entry there. Maybe this little red bar, okay? Moves up, pulls back, decent buy setup. That kind of fails, rips up, and then it does all this. Comes back 100% over here. But as it bounces back up, it stays in a range. This is the typical type of swing trade you're, gonna, you're probably going to take. Now, why am I showing you this? Why am I telling you this? Because not every swing trade is going to be this perfect, amazing three-bar play or perfect, amazing buy setup. Daily charts aren't that clean sometimes. But that doesn't mean it's not a good trade. Okay, so we have a breakout here. The negative here is kind of, you know, how big the stop is. Yeah, we have, let's call it $9 here is the entry. You have from 9 to 11. The problem is your stop loss is 7. So you have a $2 stop loss with a $4 target. No, not even, a $2 target. So then you have to ask yourself, wow, would I take it? That's a tough call. It only has one-to-one -to, -one to resistance, but this is where you need to think next level as a trader, okay? Look at it this way. What if this stock pulls up like it did, okay? Bounces at $9, your stop's at $7, $2 stop loss. You're up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bars. What if it pulls back to $9 and puts in a bottoming tail with a pivot, then what? Well, most likely that $2 stop loss is gonna get lowered to maybe a $1 stop loss or maybe a 50 cent stop loss. So that gives you an opportunity when it pulls back, if it pulls back, to add shares and raise your stop. So there are circumstances where you might not wanna take this because, well, it doesn't have a good enough risk to reward. And if your management maybe is all or nothing or something of that nature, you might say, yeah, I'm gonna pass on this. But you could also look at it and go, you know what? It'll probably pull back at some point. Maybe it goes up to $11, only one R, and then it pulls back to 10 and gives me an opportunity to add. So that one is largely dependent upon your management. I'm showing this chart because it's a chart that makes you think. Not every trade is a no-brainer. A lot of trades are start. you have to really think through these swing trades. Okay, and this is a good example of that. All right. Now, somebody was commenting on this earlier. But this is kind of like the holy grail of trading, right? Intraday swing trades. The holy grail of trading, in my opinion. You take a stock that has a really nice daily chart, nice daily gap. And in this case, you have a stock that looked like it was going to pivot and go higher, right? $65, it triggers a little bit of a buy setup. Maybe you put your stop loss right there. And then whap. Nope, not the song, because that's nasty. All right? Gapping under the bottoming tail. Has room all the way down to $55. So you have room from basically 62 to like 55 $7 worth of room. So as an intraday trader, we're looking at this gap down and going, wow, there's $7 worth of room in this stock. And that's from the gap list. So our immediate job here is to find an intraday entry. And guess what? Wow. One minute chart, 62.50 by 62.70, maybe use the high of the day of 62.80 or something like that. And this thing just tanks. I mean, it goes down $2 on a 30 cent stop, 20, 30 cent stop. So you're looking at anywhere from five to 10 to one, depending on the kind of stop loss you use. So you already have five to 10 R in the bag here, but this stock has a really nice daily chart with a lot of room to drop. And then you see what? The 60-minute chart consolidate out. So what do you do? You hold some for swing trading. Okay? 
what am I getting at by giving you all these different angles? We're talking about scanning on FinViz and building a universe. Then we're talking about looking at your gap list and not forgetting about it two or three days later. Then we're talking about intraday swings where you actually, sorry, where you actually take a trade on your two or five minute chart and hold some of the shares overnight. What is all of this doing? It's giving you tons of swing trading opportunities, tons and tons of swing trading opportunities. Okay. So don't tell me you can't find swing trades. They're out there all the time. Now, Sometimes swing trading is choppier because the market environment is overlappy, red bar, green bar, toad in a blender, fine. But the opportunities are still there. Sometimes we get shaken out because the market's crazy. But the opportunities are there. You can find them from your gap list and hold them overnight as intraday swings. You can find them from your gap list, but they trigger two or three or four days later. You can also find them from your universe of stocks that we talked about. They're everywhere. Okay, they are everywhere. So I, I don't want to hear like I can't find swing trades. I don't know how to scan for them. Look, you're going to scan on your dollar gainers and dollars losers list. You can use percentage gainers, percentage losers list. Okay, you can use as we talked about over here. Let's go back up to it. You can use FinViz and just dwindle down your universe to two or three or four hundred stocks and then just go over them. Okay, there should be something out there for you to trade if you do the things I just talked about. Okay, we talked up here on how to build the universe, price, volume, tradeability, trading range, exchange preferences. That's how you filter your universe. And by filtering it, you'll get three to 500 stocks. After you filter the universe, then you do what? You scan those three to 500 stocks for the best daily charts you can find. Probably 10, 20, 30 ideas. About 10% of your list will produce an idea. Doesn't mean that idea is great, but it's good enough that you want to watch it. Okay, that's angle one. That's angle one. Angle two, you're an intraday trader and you also have a gap list. And that gap list, like, for example, was it DG? Yeah, that gap list gives you a beautiful gap on DG. And then you watch it two or three days later and it gives you a daily three bar play. And that daily three bar play rips. Okay, and we saw it over here as well. Okay. This is a stock that had a beautiful gap, but it took four days for this thing to actually trigger as a swing trade. And then the ultimate goal, the perfect goal is what? Take the gap, trade it intraday, make money on it intraday, 2R, 3R, 4R, whatever, and then hold half your shares, a quarter of your shares, whatever, overnight as a swing trade because it has six, seven more dollars worth of room. Okay, so all of these things will help you find swing trading opportunities. Okay, so again, I apologize, guys, for a couple of the little tech glitches in the middle there. Um, but I hope you guys learned a little bit about swing trading scanning and how you can find more opportunity other than just scanning daily charts, scanning daily charts, scan those gapping stocks in the morning and then watch them. If they close the day really strong or really weak, Look at them one, two, three days later, because most of them, guys, if those gaps are really good gaps, level two, maybe a level one gap, most likely that trend is going to continue. And if that trend continues, there's a higher likelihood it's going to provide you with another opportunity to get into the trade. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed that lecture. I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. We'll get back at it again next week.